A Colorado judge has now set December 17th for a showdown. A fight those guys didn't start. This guy did. We investigate investment fraud. So we go after the Bernie Madoffs of the world. We think it's good the state of Colorado chases after folks who rip other people off. But it cost millions to do it. When Gerald Rome got appointed Colorado Securities Commissioner, he bragged in a press release about all the money he was getting back for victims of fraud. And from the headlines, the numbers are big. But when we asked to see the proof fraud victims were actually getting justice, what happened next was bad. Colorado Assistant Attorney General Eric Maxfield refused to give us records under the Colorado Open Records Act, CORA it's called. What did he tell you? Unless we told him who we were asking for. He understands nothing about Duco. <laughs> nothing. We say that broke the law. When Ken Salazar was Colorado Attorney General, he even wrote this, Mr. Maxfield. You do not have to discuss who you are or what you will do with the records. All you have to do is ask. Guess things have changed in Colorado. I've been looking for you for eight months. Eight months later, Dolcefino Consulting filed a formal complaint under Colorado law. When you have to shoot, shoot, don't talk. And that's when this fight turned ugly. We're going for a ride. Where? Just days after a Colorado judge set a rare hearing in Denver for a courtroom Cora fight, another assistant attorney general from Colorado fired another shot at us. Attacking our legal fight over your right to know as frivolous and vexatious, warning us to stop. Even I know what the word frivolous means, but I needed help from the online dictionary to tell me about that other fancy word, vexatious. Quoting, causing annoyance, intended to harass. Actually, we learned something really important from that threatening letter from Suanna Johnson, that we should know better. No one really thinks Gerald Rome is talking about actual money that is returned to investors when he flashes all those big dollar signs. We have these large eye-grabbing settlements or judgments or, or just numbers, you know, and seven-figure numbers that say, look what we got, and ultimately it's a piece of paper. That's an admission that these Colorado fraud victims, well, they've already figured it out. Probably will be dead before it all comes back. <laughs> well, I will be long dead before it all comes back. <laughs> At six dollars and twenty-two cents every three months. <laughs> and we got like checks for. I think they haven't exceeded. You know, they haven't reached seven dollars ever. It's always been six dollars and some odd change. But some folks are cashing in. We've exposed lawyers in fraud cases making big bucks as receivers on behalf of victims instead of them getting the money. So, um, thank you, and I wish you luck uh, pushing the um, Colorado people to do their job. <laughs> the Colorado Attorney General's office apparently is siding against fraud victims, warning us to stop asking all these pesky questions, or they'll ask the judge to make us pay for 60 hours of the legal work they say they've done trying to help Gerald Rome. 6,000 bucks. Just listen to the names they're calling us. Quoting, arbitrary, abusive, stubbornly litigious, disrespectful of truth. If Mr. Maxfield hadn't denied us records in the first place, Colorado taxpayers wouldn't have had to spend a penny on this fight. Just say, give me a break. All we wanted to show is how little money was really going back to Colorado fraud victims, and it's a fair way to judge Gerald Rome's office and all the millions he's spending. Guess he doesn't like that. I mean, I think that a lot of people would characterize it as a racket. 